Hi, my name is Anthony Ward and welcome to this Q&A for 3D World magazine. What we're going to look at today is the basic setup of subsurface scattering. Now what this will do is give the illusion of light entering the surface of an object and being scattered beneath it. You can see this uh, used on candles to get sort of a waxy effect where you have the flame penetrating the top of the candle and the light being distributed beneath the surface. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at it used to uh, give this character which you can see here a more, not, not necessarily a more realistic skin tone, but a more believable skin tone. Now I've chosen to demonstrate it on a cartoony type character because we see this all the time being uh, applied to hyper-realistic characters with detailed textures and bump maps etc. But what I want to show you here is that you can use it on other things as well rather than just saving it for your realistic work. So like I said we're going to apply it to this little guy here. Now at the moment we have a decent render, it looks quite good, the skin tones okay, um, there's a little bit too much contrast between the uh, the darker areas and the lighter areas and once we start applying subsurface scattering what will happen is the light as it's scattered beneath the surface will bleed into the darker areas and just brighten those up a little bit and make the surface appear a bit more even. So this is where we're starting at. What we ideally want to do is apply our shaders and get something like this. So as you can see as I switch between them we have our before, which is just a basic blin, and our after, which is brightened up a lot more, the surface of the skin is a lot softer, as the light is distributed more evenly across the surface. So there we can see the differences. The only other difference is there's a little bit of light being reflected from the pool onto his face there. So this is where we're starting from. Let's just minimize this. So what we need to do first is create our shader that we're going to use. So go to our rendering editors, Hypershade. We'll bring that up. Let's just ignore all these other shaders that are in this scene. Let's move this over so we can see where we're going. What we're going to do is go down to our mental ray tab here scroll all the way down to MI SSS Fast Skin Mayor. So we'll create that and what that does, that gives us this. Let's just graph that up. Now as you can see by default it doesn't look too bad so let's just apply that to our skin. Select the skin, right click, assign material to selected, let's drop that down and we can see that he's turned red which indicates that that has been applied. What I'm going to do is I will keep this render here for us to compare to. Now it may take a little while to render so I'm going to pause the video briefly while we just do another render. So with that applied with the default settings we can see that we're already starting to get a more waxy um, almost wet skin type effect. If we look at the before and after, as you can see the light is more evenly distributed across the surface. We do have these odd specular effects here which do make him look a bit plasticky still, waxy, but we can go in, with the now we've got the default settings on there, we can go in and start to adjust this to get the look that we want, which is something like that. Well, let's drop that down. Let's go to our attribute editor. Now the best way to approach this, if we look at the tab here, we have all these different settings, specularity, bump shader, light map, algorithm, etc. We've got all these different settings here, but it's good, it's a good idea to just tackle them one at a time rather than try and run in head first and uh, get them all sorted. Uh, well, well, just try and juggle them all in between. You'll just get confused um, and start to uh, get confused. Well, you just start to get confused about what you're adjusting and what the effect is looking like on the character. 
Before we do that though, I just want to touch on these couple of areas here. Now the light map tab, tab samples are 64. Now when you're, if you're rendering on a bigger scale, the simulation may look grainy. And that's just because of the amount of samples you've got here. So if you're rendering later, um, or on your own character and it's looking grainy, just turn up the samples here. So it's probably a good idea to do that just before you do your final output renders. What we also have is a scale conversion down here. Now if you're working to real world scale, so for example, say this little guy is one meter tall, where in Maya we've got it set to meters and he is scaled so he's one meter tall. If for some reason you're working to a scene that isn't scaled correctly, you use the scale conversion here to adjust it and what that will do, that's more like a multiplier. It will affect the whole shader uh, and uh, affect all the values will be multiplied by this. Now I know from using this before, I need to drop this down to about 0.3 just to get a, a more even uh, looking effect. In fact, what I'll do is we'll drop that down to 0.3, I will save this and then I'll do another render and we'll just see the differences. So with that rendered, immediately it doesn't look too different, but if we switch between that and the previous frame, as you can see it's looking a little less waxy and that's because all the values are now adjusted to be around about the correct scale. So with that set, let's leave that for now and let's now go up and start to work on our actual settings. Now as I said before, it's a good idea to start and work through these one at a time. In fact, let's just copy that tab. Get rid of that, get rid of that, just so we can make it a little bit, bit longer. We can move this over here. So first of all, I'm gonna turn off everything. So I'm gonna set, turn off the specularity. We don't wanna worry about that just yet. Turn off the diffuse weight. And we're going to turn off backscatter, subdermal scatter, and epidermal scatter. Now that has made the sample black, obviously because we've turned everything off. So what we have here are basically the different layers of skin. Epidermal scatter colour is the top layer of skin. Subdermal is, been, is the lower um, layer of skin. And backscatter controls sort of the amount of light coming from behind uh, the model or well or behind the character. So what we're going to do is just start out and work our way from the back forward. So to start us off let's just add two into backscatter weight, go back to our render view and then we'll do another render and just see how that looks. Again I'm just going to pause it while it does this so there is, it is rendered, you can just see it on the leg there. So let's just turn that a value up a little bit more. Let's turn it up to 10. Let's do another quick render and just so we can just see that uh, in there a little bit. So with that turned up to 10, now we can see, see a lot more how it's affecting the model. Now in this scene we have a number of lights, we have one coming from his right, one coming from behind him and one coming from just around the water. So we can see the light affecting here, on his face here, and the lights around the sides are a lot more subtle so that's why we're not getting lots of backscatter. And here you can also see that it's quite grainy so that's where we go back and we adjust our light map. Now if you're starting to get your values, well if you're starting to get values that are really high before you're starting to see an effect, that's where you come down and adjust your algorithm control again. So if we were happy with that, 10's quite high, so we'd maybe adjust the scale conversion so that we could drop that down and sort of balance that out. 
You can also use a texture to dictate where your backscatter is going to go. So on here, we maybe only want it on his hands. We don't want it coming through the back of his knees or these thinner areas of his arms. Because the depth is 25, which indicates, well, controls how far into the model the light will travel. That's 25 is quite a lot, so we could maybe just reduce that to 10. Let's halve the amount. So let's just pause and do another render. So by reducing the depth, we can see already on his face that the light isn't travelling so far into the model, so it's not as bright on his face there. We also have this area on his hand here, which is quite thick, so there's not as much light travelling through. Now obviously, we don't want this much backscatter, so we've adjusted the weight, which will increase the intensity, we've adjusted the depth, which tr controls how far the light is going to travel into the model, and now we need to control the radius. So this is basically the spread. So let's drop that down to maybe a small value like 5. Let's also reduce the depth again. We'll reduce that to 5. And then do another render and just see how that looks. Again, I'll just save this one actually, just so we can see the difference. So with that one done, we can see that we've, even though we started with quite high values, we needed those values just so we could see the effect and then we can dial those back and now we're just starting to restrict this to the fingers here which is where we want them ideally and maybe on the toes too compare that with how it was before there's not as much spread which we toned down with the radius and we also reduce the depth now the issues we're having now is obviously the arm here is as thick as the fingers so we're getting it coming through the arm too and this is where the textures come into play we want to control this so that it only affects the fingers and it's not going to show up on the arm here so what we can do is we can pipe in a texture which is what I'll just do now right all I've done is I've just uh, just piped in a texture into this channel here if we just uh, go across and look at this texture if I click view, let's see where that comes up. Here it is. So as you can see, if I just zoom that out, this is just the UV setup. So these are where the fingers are here and here. We have a little bit on the cheek and the nose, and we have a little bit around the toes and around the feet. So with that controlling where things are going to go, let's just bring back the render. Let's just see the difference that has made. So with that rendered, you can now see it's restricted to the fingers and around the toes. If we compare it with the last one, we were getting a lot of backscatter here, which is coming from the light which we've got just above the water. But using that texture has controlled that and restricted it to these areas here. So that's just balancing out and getting your backscatter set up. So let's say you're happy with that, we move up to the next layer. Now because our radius down here is 5, let's also let's just reduce this as well. Because we know we reduced them down here. So let's set that to 1. We can see up here this updates to tell us that we've uh, we've uh, added that in. And what I'm also going to do is start to bring in the diffuse weight. So I'm going to set that to 4. As you can see, that's brought in a more, uh, well, a nicer skin tone. Now, up here, you could also pipe in a diffuse colour texture. And if you have a diffuse colour texture, it's a good idea to pipe that same texture into your epidermal scatter colour. As the epidermal is a top layer of skin, it makes sense for that to copy your diffuse texture. But for now, Let's just focus on these actual values. So with that set to 1, this set to 10, let's again do another render just to see how it looks. I'll just save that, pause it. So that's with the subdermal applied. And we can see, we can start to see how the backscatter is working with that. 
And obviously here, now we're thinking, well, the backscatter is obviously too strong. So now we have those two attributes in, obviously, and the diffuse weight as well. Let's just drop down the backscatter to maybe five as well. The subdermal scatter weight is probably a bit too high. So let's halve that as well to 0.5. And the radius, again, this is the, the amount it spreads across the surface. So let's drop that down to five as well. And we'll just do another render. As you can tell, it's a lot of tweaking values, doing a render, tweaking values, doing a render. Um, but by doing it in these sort of steps, you sort of, it's a lot manageable than trying to balance out everything in one go. So I'll just pause this again. So with those values changed, we can see the backscatter is still quite strong on his fingers and his toes. So we can afford to drop that down again, maybe adjust the depth as well. So we could maybe drop that down to three, maybe drop the weight down to three as well. Subdermal, maybe increase the scatter slightly, 7.5. And now we can start to add in the last subsurface scattering layer, and that's the epidermal. So this is the top layer, remember? So let's add that to 0.5. That updates up here as well. And then we'll do another render just to see how that all balances out. So with that final layer added in, we can see we're getting a much nicer skin tone. It's a lot softer and looking a bit more natural than the plasticky blend shader that we were using before. And it's in, in all honesty, it's not taken us that long. We've just gone in and just balanced these three sections out just to get the sort of this, to this sort of level. What you need to do now is just go in and just adjust the values just to get the look that you're after. Now, if, if you're not sure, get some reference off the internet and just compare that with this. But for now, I'm quite happy to, for us to just leave this and move on rather than me spending more time adjusting the values. So let's say you've adjusted those and you're happy. Let's close that down. Obviously, you can pipe in textures here for that, an extra level of control. So the next section is specularity. Just while I'm here, obviously you can pipe in a bump map if you have one or a normal map, just to give that extra level of surface detail. So overall weight, let's set that to one. That's just gonna enable it. What we have here is we have primary specular color and secondary specular color. Now the difference between these is the primary specular color is more of a global specular uh, effect, whereas the secondary specular colour is going to pick out those smaller highlights like you would have on your lips, your eyes, around the eyes, your cheeks, uh, or on your hands, the more oily part of your, parts of your skin. So just like we did before, let's disable one, set the weight to zero, and if you notice there, the highlight that was in the middle here disappeared. So if I just set that back to five like so, you can see that reappear. So that's a, a smaller highlight. So again, let's do another render with that just set to one, just with the primary specular color on and just see how it looks. So there we've added in that specularity and that's helped to pick out these edges here. And we've got a slight shine here. So just like any specularity values, you can adjust how wide it is um, and via this shininess value here. Now five is going to be quite a wide, um, well, quite a wide effect. The higher the value, the, uh, the more focused the effect will be. And for me, I think fi five looks quite fine. And weight is obviously going to be the strength. Um, and you can, just like everything else, you could attach a texture into here to indicate and control where you want the specularity to affect. What we have up here is an edge factor. 
and down here we have an edge weight. Now what this is going to do is uh, affect how the light, we see how we have it around the back of the leg here, it's going to affect how much the light affects the edge of your model. If you look at uh, photographs of people where there's a, lot, a strong backlight, you get a lot of uh, edge specularity naturally on skin. And just like normal specularity, the lower the value, the wider um, the effect. So if we drop the edge factor to 1, and let's turn up the primary edge weight to, let's turn it up to 3, just so we can see the effect. We'll save that, do another render. So with that rendered, as you can see, we've got much stronger lighting around the edge of the character to how it was before. It's too much, but we ramped up the values just so we could see the effect. So let's uh, turn those back down. So maybe we drop that to two, or increase that to two, sorry, which will narrow the effect. Adjust the weight to one. And then we could do another render and just balance those out. And then once we've done that, we can come down and we can add in some secondary weight if we need it. And this sort of depends on the look you're after with your model and how you are uh, wanting it to look. And again, you can uh, pipe in a texture to control exactly where you want that secondary specular colour. And as I said before, if you want the lips to be a little bit uh, uh, more moist and particularly around the eyes or the cheeks and the, the nose, the more oily or damp areas of the body or the face, you could use a texture in here or even in here just to control where that goes. Now I'm not going to continue on just adjusting all these values to show you. If I just go back to my original one here, as you can see this is much more balanced. Uh, we have a couple of textures which I've added into this. If I open up, if we bring back this, so this was our back scatter texture. Now this is just the diffuse texture and it's just uh, an ambient occlusion baked out uh, and then added in just to give us a bit more depth to the character. And that was added in, if I just drop that down, that was added in into our diffuse colour and into our epidermal scatter colour. So again, we need the diffuse colour and the epidermal to be pretty much the same because they're both the top layer of skin. This is what we used in our subdermal scatter colour. As you can see, it's just a copy of our normal diffuse texture, but more saturated, uh, blurred slightly and then also reduced because you don't need that much detail in there. So they're only the textures that are in him here. So there's not much more I want to really go over on this uh, tutorial. Uh, this is only just a quick Q&A and an introduction into this. There's a lot more that we could explore. There's a lot more detail I could have gone into. Um, and maybe I will do in a future tutorial for 3D World where we have more time to explore a lot more of the areas. But as a quick Q&A, a, a quick short tutorial, I think what we've done here is covered all the basics and given you the foundations which I hope you can then take with you and explore um, and have the confidence to apply subsurface scattering to your models. Um, so I think we'll leave the, the video there I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching, I hope you've learned a lot from it. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to uh, contact me through my site or on Twitter. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.